Good morning and welcome to morning prayer in the parish of Rayleigh. It's um, Monday, August the 8th. Um, I'm with you again. Uh, I'm currently uh, uh, on the terrace of my lovely sister-in-law's house um, in Ripa Tiatina in Italy again. Um, we've got a lovely view that it's a bit too bright to see, um, but I'll, I'll try and shoot some video of it uh, looking um, up the valley towards the uh, uh, towards the Grand Sasso mountain. Um, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's been lovely to have a uh, holiday to spend time with family. So let's begin um, with morning prayer that you can find uh, either in the daily prayer app um, or online via the Church of England website. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit renew our lives and your praises be ever on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. There's two psalms uh, set for today. Uh, the first of those is Psalm 27. Uh, which begins, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I, shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Uh, that's Psalm 27. And then the second psalm set for today is Psalm 30. And that begins, I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. So that's Psalm 30. Uh, please feel free to take some time, stop the video if you want, and to uh, spend some time uh, with Psalms 27 or 30. The Old Testament reading set for today um, is quite a long one, um, and um, uh, it's from the first book of Samuel, reading chapter 14, verses 24 to 46. So that's the first book of Samuel, chapter 14, 24 to 46. Um, and that's, and this is um, uh, an incident where the king Saul, uh, the, uh, the king of Israel, um, really makes some very rash decisions um, in which he sort of sets his own views before both gods uh, and the needs of his soldiers. Um, and he's sort of trying to do things to uh, glorify himself. Um, and forgetting uh, who he should be glorifying. Um, uh, the, uh, the runner in me um, also uh, says that uh, this Bible reading contains um, uh, at least a lesson on uh, the need for nutrition before you uh, go into uh, any kind of physical exertion um, because Saul tells his soldiers not to uh, eat before a fight, uh, which doesn't strike me as a brilliant idea. Um, as I said, that's quite a long reading, so we'll jump ahead straight to today's Gospel reading. And that Gospel reading is taken from uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 23, reading from verse 13 to 25. So that's Luke 23, 13 to 25. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people, and said to them, You have brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had put, been put in prison for an insurrection 
that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! The third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man and they asked that he released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. And the responses uh, to the gospel reading, trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to God the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. So in both the readings, uh, both the Old Testament and the Gospel reading for today, um, you're seeing people prioritise or getting their priorities wrong. Um, Samuel, sorry, in the, in the Samuel reading, Saul is um, sort of setting his own agenda for how he wants his troops to prepare for battle um, and uh, how he wants to give God the glory for his victory uh, and how he wants to um, treat his son Jonathan who broke the fasting rule. Um, Saul setting his agenda whereas at every turn um, God is uh, God is sort of basically saying do the other thing um, or, or what God would have wanted him to do the other thing. Um, and uh, in the gospel reading, we're, we're obviously hearing Pilate, um, rather than uh, rather than following a true path of justice um, in the in the legal sense, um, gives in to the will of the crowd. And don't forget that crowd's been stirred up by the uh, uh, by the uh, the people's leaders and the chief priests. Um, uh, and uh, sort of everyone is, you know, even though it's God's plan, um, sort of everyone is, becomes complicit in Jesus' uh, or sentencing Jesus to death uh, and then his event eventual crucifixion. Excuse me, mate. <coughs> um, so, and so Pilate's listening to, listening to the crowd, listening to the mob. Um, and uh, without wishing to get too political, uh, I think some of the rhetoric we're seeing around the, um, the challenge to become the next Prime Minister. Um, seems to be um, people playing to a particular mob um, and uh, many of the promises that the candidates are making don't seem to be in the best interests of, of broader society um, but seem to be designed to um, satisfy uh, the current electorate. Um, so if you are in any position of political influence maybe we should be um, uh, or if you uh, maybe we should be contacting our, our political um, representatives and uh, and seeking more compassion uh, and more grace and more justice and equality okay let's move on um, our prayers as ever on a Monday we pray for um, the world of work um, in all its many forms which um, I find it a privilege to do as a, as a, as a working person, obviously not this last week and, and the week to come, um, but uh, I, I feel honoured to, um, to sort of represent uh, the parish in, in doing that. And as we do every day, we pray, Father, let us pray. We pray for our day and the things we uh, need and want and will get done today. We thank you if we have an opportunity for a holiday or for rest and relaxation or for play and time with friends and family. We thank you for the fellowship we're able to share with people as we spend time with them. 
whether that is like I am on holiday um, or whether it's at home or whether it's at work. We thank you for the people in our lives. We pray that if we are still working or caring or learning or teaching, that again, you will be with us in our activities this day. Help us to remember that we are all part of a larger society, a larger whole, and that all that we're doing is for the benefit of that society, and help us to remember to do it for your glory, Father. We pray for our world and its needs, and again, we think about the need for justice and equality and fairness. Pray for those many countries where there are people in need, whether that's in need of food or shelter, whether it's about peace or justice, whether it's about health and welfare, whether it's about democracy and freedom just think of those different needs in the world and we thank you that we are so fortunate where we live uh, that, uh, that we do have a reasonable degree of all of those needs and we thank you for those uh, that we're, a, we're in that position and we pray for your church Lord we pray for your church around the world of all its denominations and this week I particularly want to pray for the bishops meeting in the Lambeth conference. It was the, the newspaper stories and, and, and the reports coming out of that and the conclusions of that conference feel so in one particular area just feel so unjust. And we pray maybe that, uh, that our leaders show some of the wisdom that uh, that perhaps Pilate should have shown in not listening to the mob and looking for greater justice and equality for everyone. We also pray for the church in this country and more locally that perhaps despite what's going on in the upper echelons of the church that we can still be a parish and church worshipping communities that can be open and welcoming for everyone when people step through our doors and into our buildings that they are made to feel welcome and loved because God loves us all and we move on to praying for the world of work. Let's do things in reverse order for once, change things up. Father, we pray first for anyone who is currently not working. We pray that they're able to take some comfort and relaxation in their time and that they are still going to be provided for during that period of unemployment. We pray that they will be helped to find their next opportunity and they'll be guided towards the right option for them. And help us to remember people who are unemployed so that we can give them encouragement and support. We pray for those who find their work unfulfilling and stressful and those whose work is dangerous. So Father, protect us all in our work. Protect us from any harm, whether that's mental or physical harm. Please ensure that people are given everything they need to be safe in their workplaces. We pray for people who find their work stressful. And we ask that they're able to find a balance and a relaxation 
in their work so that the stress doesn't become damaging or unhealthy. And for people who find their work unfulfilling, help them to see that there is value in it. We are all part of this greater society. And that regardless of what we do, there is a benefit to it. And we pray that we will all be able to see those benefits and share and maybe encourage people. Again, think about how we react to people we know who are in those situations. Maybe we, we need to be thankful to people who find their work unfulfilling. Maybe we need to care for people who find their work stressful. Maybe we need to encourage people and thank people uh, who find their work dangerous. We pray for people who work in commerce and industry, who provide so much of, uh, of what we need, whether it's about creating all the physical things that we see around us, building them or making them, moving them around, selling them to us. We thank you for all of that. We're also about financing and insuring and protecting. We thank you, Father, that we have been able to develop this industry, this industrial society that we live in. Help us to remember to keep it just and fair and open to everyone. But we thank you that we've been able to use this technology to the benefit of our society and we thank you father for everyone who works in farming and fishing again providing all the food that we eat and we think about everyone in the supply chain that goes from sea and river and field and bar through processing through preparation through packing uh, and then into our shops and, and then to our homes. We thank you for everyone that's involved in that whole business of bringing the food that you provide to our kitchens and to our tables. And finally, we pray for people who are working in media and the arts. Uh, we thank you that they're able to represent our world back to us. That, uh, uh, and that we ask for uh, their talents and skills to be used wisely. And we say the collective for today. Almighty God, whose servant, God, whose servant Dominic grew in the knowledge of your truth and formed an order of preachers to proclaim the faith of Christ, by your grace give to all your people a love for your word and a longing to share the gospel so that the whole world may come to know you and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen. so to conclude the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life Amen let us bless the Lord thanks be to God so that's morning prayer for today I wish you a great week God be with you in your work in your rest in your relaxation in your play in your learning everything we're doing God be with you have a great week see you soon bye now